Raised by refugees, I grew up in Taipei, Taiwan. At the age of 13, I found out my dad had lost his job. So when my aunt and uncle called from America and said, we're going to open up Chinese versions of McDonald's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Y'all want to come and help? My parents said yes. So bringing the four kids um, to America from Taipei, Taiwan to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Slight culture shock, I know. But um, I, contrary to popular opinions, I did not excel in math or science. <laughs> I beeline straight for art. Art was my universal language. And at the restaurant, um, food was my mom's universal language. So um, 16 franchises of, of Chinese restaurants in the Southwest later, my, um, my mom and, and dad um, decided to purchase the location in Dallas, Texas. So we moved here, and in the kitchen, my mom would train immigrants and refugees to come and work in our kitchen and set them onto bigger and better opportunities. I saw firsthand what this is like, how it can create change and transform lives. And so I thought, what better way to honor my mom's legacy um, after she passed from cancer than to continue her lifelong work. So this is how Break, Break, Break Borders was born. Break, Break, Break Borders is catering with a cause. It is food with purpose. We empower um, refugee women economically through the storytelling of food and culture. So you can see they make beautiful, delicious food and we make this with the social impact. So the women don't just drop off the food, you see. At each event they actually get up and do storytelling and through the storytelling you find out about their lives before they came from war-torn countries and what it's like for them to live as refugees abroad and um, what it's like for them to live here in America and what it's been like to cook with Break, Break, Break Borders. We've been really, really fortunate to work with some really incredible women and um, some of the success stories are what touches our, heart, our hearts and that gets us going. So Rania here is um, one of our success stories and we have been so thankful that she actually used to um, get really uh, scared to just um, cook for a lunch of eight and she would stay up and lose sleep over it at night. And after cooking with Break, Break, Break Borders and the training that we go through with the women where they get um, the necessary license and certifications and um, to in the food service industry. So not only do they get to cook with us and if they're interested in um, going on to um, bigger and better, better opportunities, much like what my mom did with um, our, our cooks in, um, in the kitchen at our restaurants, they can actually go and start their own businesses. And so essentially we're creating micro entrepreneurs. And so we're proud to say now that Rania is no longer afraid to um, cook for just eight people for lunch. Nowadays you call her up and say, I've got a wedding of three or 400. Can you handle that? She'll tell you, I got this. <laughs> so you can see this is not just about our sisterhood. This is about empowering compassion building. And my mom, you know, has really just um, throughout my life um, taught me how to be a bridge builder. And it's been challenging along the way because I'm actually a single mom and um, I have a full-time job. I am an artist. And, um, and I have this side hustle, um, Break, Break, Break Borders, which happens to be my main passion. And the thing is, being an artist, it's challenging that, you know, when, when this happened, um, that Break, Break, Break Borders initially actually was just a concept of a community dinner. I was just supposed to throw this one dinner. <laughs> And, um, and have, you know, the community come to conversations about what it's like to be 
in a city together to find, you know, the right thing to do, to be a good neighbor, and um, and to practice con- kindness and compassion every day. And I remember um, meeting all these women from, you know, Iraq, Syria, Burma, the Congo, and um, and Nepal, and um, and the women, you know, ended up cooking with us um, for the community dinner. And um, it was a huge success. Everybody wanted to know how they can help after you know dining with them and listening to their incredible stories. And um, and afterwards, I still recall that um, the ladies came up to me and they said, "Jinya," in English and in Arabic, <laughs> "You're so cute." <laughs> You know, the community dinner was beautiful, it was wonderful, but you know what? We don't need another community dinner. You know what we need? We need jobs. And that's how the catering business is worn. And I I am very much an accidental entrepreneur. I just, you know, as a social practice artist, when my community asks for water, I cannot bring them fire. So I set out to create this catering business that's grown in the past two years. It's gone on to serve clients such as um, the United Way, the Bush Institute, and um, Airbnb International. And I never dreamed that, you know, that this could come true. But knowing what my mom has taught me along the way, I knew that I could draw on that strength and be the bridge builder that she was and continue that on. And you know, a lot of times people ask me, you know, how, how do you go through this and how do you, you know, how are you compelled to, you know, do your leadership? And I don't ever really think about this as, as um, a, a, my leadership style. I really th- feel like, um, simply serving my communities as a bridge builder. And, um, and it's such an honor and privilege to, to, you know, to gratefully to serve my community in this way. And um, I urge you to, um, to do the same because it's um, just something as easy as one, two, three, as I leave you with my mom's teachings is just number one, do the right thing, um, because I honestly didn't know what I was doing. I just show up, and um, and somehow um, that happens to be um, the the right thing. And number two, um, just you know, be a good neighbor. And um, I found that you know when the ladies go out and serve all the different dinners that you know, every event at lunch or whatnot, a lot of people come up afterwards and tell the ladies um, about their recipes and cookings and how um, things have reminded them of like, wow, that rice tasted just like my grandma's dirty rice from New Orleans, or, oh, you know, this cookie is just like the shortbread that my aunt makes, or, and this is, you know, my sister's, you know, favorite um, meal, and things like that, 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 you know, just showing up to be a good neighbor. And then number three, just practice kindness and compassion every day. I'm grateful that I'm able to do that with you here today. Thank you so much for your time. (laughs) 